The rise of so-called far-right anti-immigration candidates has got the political class scared. Politicians and journalists are hyperventilating at the thought of, say, Donald Trump now becoming president of the United States. I think Donald Trump's views are just barking mad on some it's issues. It's scary yeah. as well. And some people I'm had a actually... crack and said, you're not allowed to say that. I thought, well, John Howard did. I just happened to agree. One of Trump's apparently barking mad ideas is building a wall to stop illegal immigrants crossing over the Mexican border, a quarter of a million of them in seven months. We're going to build the wall. We have no choice. We have no choice. Build that wall. Build that wall. Build that wall. Build that wall. Now, I understand being against racism, absolutely. But we should also not tolerate the shouting down of any discussion of restricting immigration from countries with cultures at odds with our own. We should not tolerate, say, the left-wing movement in Melbourne, which physically attacks people trying to speak about this. Now, true, at least in Australia, we do have both sides of politics agreeing that illegal boat people must be stopped. But we've still got the Greens saying, let's weaken our border laws. Let's let in triple the number of refugees, 50,000 people every year. Labor says, no, no, let's just double it. These issues should be debated, but too often that debate is shouted down as racist, and not just here. That's why your anti-immigration parties in France, Germany, England, Austria are also on the rise. First, voters are sick of being abused by mainstream parties when they have genuine worries. So when a Donald Trump does come along, speaking fearlessly and frankly, they respond. But second, people do have something to fear. You see, something fascinating is happening and it's changing our world. Vast populations are now on the move from the third world to the rich West. Last year, more than one million illegal immigrants, mainly from the Muslim Middle East, crossed into Europe. Many were fleeing the war in Syria, but others were from peaceful Pakistan, Eritrea, Nigeria and Iran. Europe this year has cracked down on the Greek route, the main one, but the numbers coming to Europe are still huge. 200,000 so far this year, with more now sailing from Libya to Italy. And people are drowning again, up to 700 just last week alone. Though I tried to keep the people calm, shouting to them and saying, please sit down, do not stand, do not move, because the boat is unstable. But fear is fear. We've been rescuing five bodies. They are now on my ship. But we cannot exclude that there were uh, some more people inside the ship. Few of these people are fleeing wars. Uh, many of those rescued from another sinking boat last week were young men and most were rescued by a vessel, uh, a, the SOS vessel Aquarius. And they came mainly from Africa, Cameroon, Ivory Coast, Gambia, Guinea. They weren't fleeing war, they were looking for work. What I want from Europe is papers. I'm ready to do whatever job they want me to. I want to work to help my sister and my family I've left behind so they can eat at least three times a day. To get a better life. Freedom is first, but not just that. We have a lot of problems and we hope that the Europeans will understand and help us. This mass migration from the third world will be a challenge for our political class for maybe generations. For instance, does Europe defend its borders, its cultures, or does it give in? The United Nations this week said, give in. Michael Muller, head of the UN's Geneva office, one of its top officials, told Europe's leaders to prepare for the arrival of millions more refugees, and these leaders should stop being racist about it, he said, and instead create a, quote, positive narrative about what was about to hit them, because this was only going to accelerate. 
As he said, the poor of the third world now have cell phones, they can check out what's happening in richer part of the world, and they have enough money now to get there themselves. But don't worry, this top UN official, Michael Miller, said Europe could handle all these illegal immigrants if it just forced countries like Australia to take some of them. As he put it, and I quote, has somebody pushed Australia? Pushed. Listen, most people don't want to surrender their culture, open their borders. And if our political classes fail to defend these people, they will turn instead to those so-called extremists who will fight. And some will be a lot more worrying than a Donald Trump.